From the beginning of time, humans have tried to heal themselves with ritual and prayer and with whatever nature provided. Through thousands of years of trial and error, formal systems of health care developed, systems based on foods, herbs, and other natural remedies. These systems live side by side with what we call Western medicine. Western medicine has been an enormous benefit in helping to conquer devastating infections and perfecting surgical procedures. But there is more to medicine than doctors and hospitals. And that's exactly what we'll explore this week on A Better Way to Health. Hello, I'm Stuart Scheip, a registered pharmacist, acupuncture physician, and Chinese herbalist. I'm your host this week. We make no effort to recommend or to judge, only offer that you explore a theory that good medicine comes in many forms. So let's get started. Phone lines are open for you for questions, comments, or experiences about your health. Let's hear from you. We are ready, folks, for another show. Thank you for being with us today. And uh, hopefully the information that I give you will change your life or change the life of someone that you tell to listen to my show every single week. So I have an amazing topic I uh, wanted to present with you today in this episode. And it was called the yin and yang of beauty. And uh, it's like, what is yin and what is yang? Oh, I heard of that yin and yang thing. Is that what you're talking about? The polar opposites? I am. And we're going to talk about what we would call this summer is a summer slim down. How do you get this yin and yang to cooperate to flow harmoniously in the body and present you with beautiful skin, beautiful complexion? And actually, even more than that, sometimes you might have even heard about acupuncture facelifts. We're not going to talk a lot about that today, but we do have some amazing stuff to present to you about how to get beautiful from the inside out. I know a lot of docs are probably even dermatologists are very focused on using creams and serums and lotions and all that good kind of stuff to create beauty. But I remind people is beauty comes from the inside, not from the outside in, comes from the inside out. But before we get into that, before I really get you all of those beautiful little hints about how to get your, your body back and your beauty back, why don't we talk about what is this yin and what is this yang? What is this whole concept? Because in Chinese medicine, pretty much means everything. It's all about balance, right? About just like a scale, yin on one side and yang on the other side. And if they're balanced in everything that we're doing through life, we should have some pretty good health. So if we address yin first, what is yin? Things, yin and yang, let me tell you, mean nothing outside of each other. They have to be compared to each other because in the Chinese old pictograms, which are actually the Chinese language is more of a picture language, not a phonetic language like we have in America with letters, it developed with pictures. So the yin picture was the shady side of a hill. So if you looked on a hill and on the shady side, you would call that yin and the sunny side of the hill was called yang. So there you're kind of getting an image that they're opposites. If the sun is yang, then the moon must be yin. If women are yin, then men must be yang. See, everything has a yin-yang top constitution to it. When we talk about cosmetics or about beauty, things like that are dark are more yin. Things that are more bright or more vibrant in the skin would be more yang. Strength would be more yang. And uh, things like the opposite of that, not weakness, but uh, mildness or calmness would be more of a yin quality. Yin is the inside of the body and the cells that line the entire digestive tract, including the lung. The yang would be the outside of the body, the cells that line the skin and the large intestine. So that has a lot to do with skin. If you want to get rid of toxins, I've said this on previous shows too, if you want to get rid of toxins in the body, you really think about, well, I have a good bowel movement every day and that's my toxic eliminator. And that's true if you're having a good bowel movement every day and you don't have a lot of inflammation in the digestive system. So if you can't get toxins out through the large intestine, the associated organ system with the yang large intestine would be the yin lung. And so the large intestine metaphorically, if you can get this, would send those toxins up to the lung and say to the lung, hey, listen, I can't get rid of these toxins on the body. This person's only having a bowel movement every other day or once a week. So what do you want me to do? How do I get rid of these toxins? Because I know that's really important. And the lung says, hey, don't worry, I'll take on your load. 
and the lung says, wow, I can't breathe these toxins out. I have got one other idea. I'm going to send these toxins out to the skin because the skin is a huge detoxification organ. And if the skin can receive the toxins, then we'll dump them out through the skin. And then now you can start seeing the picture that if you want beautiful skin, you have to obviously think about what's my toxic burden or what's my toxic load? What am I exposed to? What am I putting on my skin? What am I absorbing through my skin? Because that stuff ends up getting trapped inside and it makes the outside look really, really bad, right? So if we're looking at the beginnings of yin and yang or beginnings of this, this theory of yin and yang, where does that come from even deeper? Well, we say there's something, an energy that Chinese have always said, there's an energy in the body. They've always called it qi, Q-I or C-H-I, as an energetic force in the body that you can't really see, you can't really touch, but you can feel it as it moves through the body for sure. And the Chinese always depicted where this energy, this qi energy was flowing throughout the entire body. It flows through a series of energetic highways or pathways, just like you would have I-95 or the turnpike here down in Florida, you have a flow of this energy, this chi on certain highways. Now, if that chi is moving through any of those highways, it carries with it blood. And blood to the Chinese physician means everything that nourishes that cell, actually nourishes your skin, right? It's like getting good nutrition. If you want to have a part of your body heal, what does it need? It needs good energy and it needs good blood based on Chinese principles to heal. So now we know a little bit about yin, we know a little bit about yang, and we know a little bit about qi and a little bit about blood. And as long as we've got that qi flowing and blood flowing smoothly throughout the entire body, through all these energy highways, oh, primo, you've got excellent health. But the problem is life, right? I mean, aging, toxicity, stress, the lack of nourishment, maybe we're not getting the things that we need for our body to process this good blood. Maybe nutrition is lacking. Maybe we're not exercising our face. I was like, how do you exercise your face? I exercise my body. I go to the gym and I do calisthenics and jumping jacks. How is my face going to do jumping jacks, right? I mean, that's ridiculous, Dr. Shai. But believe it or not, Yes, Cliff was just showing me on the camera here. He's like, he smiled. Oh my gosh, you know how many muscles are in the face? There's hundreds of tiny little muscles in the face that are exercising you every single day. And the Chinese believe that yes, facial massage can be very, very helpful. We can take that one additional step. I might leave this as a secret for, for a little bit later here, but there's also a secret on how we can use specialized, really high-tech devices to give our facial a really good massage and to get that chi and that blood circulating in the face like crazy. Because remember, if you have disruption in the flow of chi, the actually the first sign of wrinkles in your face actually begins internally when a person's constitution, when their makeup becomes a little deficient or becomes unbalanced. We say there's a weakness or a stagnation of this energy in the body of this chi, or we have movement of blood that becomes stuck or stagnated. So that's not a good thing. The acupuncturist is one that's very, very well trained in how to move this chi in the body, how to move that blood, and what certain organ systems really need to be tonified or need to be reduced. And when I say reduced, what is it? Some people come in with all oh, stuck chi. They're so pent up. That might be reflux and red flushed face and high blood pressure and oh, feeling lousy, feeling just stuck. Oh my gosh, you are in for an amazing treatment when you receive acupuncture for the first time because all that stuckness goes away. It like melts away while you're on the table receiving care. You know, the analogy would be if you ever had a garden hose that had a kink in it, right? And that garden was supposed to be nourished and watered by that garden hose. What do you think that garden is going to look like if you remain with that kink in the hose, right? It's not going to do so well. So the acupuncturist job is kind of that, especially in Florida. I hate Florida with the hoses. I mean, they're always dry rotting and kinking. And I was like, oh my gosh, my grass would suffer. My garden would suffer if it can't get that living life force, right? That's exactly what acupuncture was all about. 
is trying to get this energy, this chi moving, and acupuncture does just that. It removes the kinks in the hose so that the garden, our internal organs, can be nourished and fed. It's really not a hard concept to kind of understand once you kind of get the hang of it, but now I'm going to get a little bit deeper, 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 and now you know about what acupuncture might be able to do moving this chi and this blood, but what are the factors that really contribute to aging? I mean, let's be honest with ourselves, right? If you really want to get to the root of the problem, you have to figure out what is the root, and I alluded to the fact of Maybe it could be a lack of nutrients. People have asked me, my patients have asked me for years, Dr. Scheib, do you think it's important to take a whole food multivitamin or a whole food supplement, you know, just because like a multivitamin or maybe omega-3 fatty acids or maybe some probiotics or some minerals? I was like, absolutely. Because today, unfortunately, thousands of years ago, well, let's go back a hundred years. Go and ask your grandma and your grandfather, hey, grandma and gram, what is what, were, what did you eat? Did you eat organic food or did you eat regular food? And they would look like you had three eyes in your head, right? It's like, of course, there was no such thing as organic food back then because everything had a bunch of nutrition in it. I read one time that like, and I can't remember the exact figures, but like a rutabaga grown from the ground in a, in a rich soil, an organic nutrition rich soil would give us probably about 84 milligrams of of iron. And now you look at that rutabaga today, even grown organically in the best soil, and maybe you're struggling to get 18 to 20 milligrams of iron out of that rutabaga. You see, everything comes from the soil. You're not eating the plant, you're eating kind of the soil, the nutrition in the soil. So if the, since our soil is deficient, obviously our digestion and the nutrition that we present to it is going to be deficient. I alluded that to digestive problems. So if you have reflux or indigestion, bloating, gas, irritable bowel syndrome, uh, inflammatory bowel syndromes in general, things like celiacs or spruce, I mean, I can go on and on. If you've got problems in your digestive system, even if you're taking like an antacid or a pill to stop the acid, you are already at a loss for digestion. Because that means your digestive system isn't assimilating. It can't pull the nutrition into the body like it should be, right? Emotional imbalances, oh my gosh, too, ang too anxious, too grieving, too angry. All of this causes stagnation in the flow of this energy and blood in the body. And you know, that kind of makes sense. People that don't feel good emotionally don't feel pretty. They don't feel like their body is alive and energetic. So emotional stability is very, very important as far as getting back to a state of beauty and a state of health. And the environmental toxicities loaded. These are all factors that contribute to aging. The toxicity burden on us today in America is unbelievable. I'm not even going to go down that road, but I do discuss that with my patients. And I think if you get on my website at www.traditionalchinesehealing.com, there's a questionnaire on there and look under patient forms. There's a toxicity questionnaire. You can answer that question for yourself to determine how toxic are you? How stressed are you? There's a stress analysis on there as well. Free of charge, folks. Just get on there and then call the office and find out how you can get scheduled for a consult. And let's discuss that. Let's figure out what the next steps are to get you detoxified, to get you de-stressed, right? Because stress is the last factor that I wanted to mention about the factors that influence aging. We put together a program in the office. Um, I have an amazing marketing assistant. She put together a program called the Summer Slim Down. And what's that all about? I know everybody is interested in, in sliding into that great bathing suit this summer, you know, and getting some sun and looking good. But you know what it's all about? It's about the inside, folks. It's not just about the outside. And if you really start on a path to really generate some good flow of chi and blood with nutrients, staying away from toxins, your body will respond amazingly. And then you'll wonder why, wow, I'm sleeping better. I'm not having to get up to go to the bathroom at night. I've got great energy. Oh my gosh, my hands and my feet are warm. They were always cold before. And oh my gosh, I don't have any stomach. I don't have any bloating, any gas stuff. And my allergies are starting to clear up. Yeah, all of the bad side effects, right? Of, of getting your body back into balance. This is what I'm talking about. It's not just about beauty, but we created the program 
to involve uh, actually a trainer. So we have movement in there. We have nutrition in there. We have detoxification in there. We have acupuncture. We even have these amazing, I'm here, I'm going to allude to the secret, amazing high technical devices, including Avazia facelifting that we can do to actually tone and strengthen these tiny little muscles in the face to bring technologically a lot of electrons into the skin because see, our skin is held tight and beautiful with a good electrical resistance. But over time, we tend to lose that electrical resistance. What am I talking about? I'm talking about chi, right? The electric, you can't see it, you can't touch it. Oh, you can feel it. Stick your finger in a socket one time and tell me if there's not electric in that socket. But the critical key is I'm talking about chi. So if you have an electrical resistance, you have nice, healthy toned skin. But if you lose that electrical resistance in the skin, you're gonna start having a lot of wrinkles. So we can kind of inoculate a tiny, tiny little bit of electrical resistance back into the skin. You would be amazed even at the very first treatment, how well that looks. Now, combine that with detoxification, combine that with good nutrition, combine that with acupuncture. Oh man, you have a amazing type of healing going on for dealing with yin and yang beauty. But remember what I said, always from the inside out, not from the outside in. Of course, I don't have time in this specific session to talk about, oh my gosh, why should we be drinking water without plastic bottles or all the toxins and where they're coming from and avoiding bad fats? You guys kind of know that, trans fatty acids and and mayonnaise and imitation sour cream and shortening and it goes on and on and on, right? I'm, I'm not gonna get into that, but you should recognize that there's particular things involved in nutrition that are on the avoidance scale as well, right? And digestion is huge, like I mentioned, just wrapping this up, making sure that we maintain a good digestive health. And that can be done in so many ways in Chinese medicine, the use of nutritional uh, supplements, the use of Chinese herbal medicine, the use of acupuncture. And I really don't know what's going on with you specifically until we talk, get on the phone even. My phone number is 772-398-4550. Or you can get on our web address at www.traditionalchinesehealing.com and click the consult. I'd like a consult and I'd like to have a little conversation with Dr. Scheif and figure out what's going on with me. Because then we can even get into even deeper and talk about like biohacking. What's all this kind of stuff like avoidance of blue lights and, and drinking structured water and practicing gratitude. And I mean, it gets really deep folks, but everybody needs something different. That's the beautiful thing about traditional Chinese medicine. It's not a, a universal treatment for, for all. It's an individualized treatment for all because we all need different things to heal our body. And some of you know all this stuff, which is great. I love patients that do their research and do the, get their information online and just need a coach to kind of run it by and find out what do I need to do, Dr. Scheip? I mean, how can I detoxify? And where are these toxins coming into my body? And, and am I adjusting toxins in my food? And the average American I read, read inhales or digest 14 pounds of additives a year. They, we eat 14 pounds of additives every year. Where are these going? Unfortunately, they're really trapped inside and we just have to get them out. We have to really create a treatment strategy individualized just for the patient. So just wrapping this up, I hope you enjoyed uh, this specific show on the yin and yang of beauty. The skin, listen, the skin is the face of your health. I mean, just the whole skin and physiognomy to be able to look at someone and say, wow, between the eyebrows, you don't have any liver problems anymore because there's no lines there. And oh, your complexion is light and rosy. That means you got good circulation in the lung and in the heart meridians. Oh my gosh, around the mouth, you don't have any crow's feet. That means your digestive system is getting so much better. See, we can use the person's physiology, their, their external appearance, to really tell what's going on with the health of that individual. So your skin, again, is really the face of your health. Different face shapes. I can look at the shape of the face and tell, are you more of a fiery person or are you more of a kidney water person? In Chinese medicine, they've been doing this for thousands of years in using something called physiognomy 
Physiognomy is a science of looking at an individual and kind of gleaming, gleaning a kind of uh, instinctive um, kind of makeup or constitution that's going on with that person. And I happen to be an expert at that. So if you want to really get the beauty of traditional Chinese medicine, everything that we have to offer you, um, I'm gonna give you some self care techniques to help improve aging specifically for you. We're gonna give you some free and easy biohacks that you can do to reverse the toxic assault on our systems every day. We might even teach you how to do a little bit of gua sha. That is really, really rocking hot right now on the internet about helping uh, massage, gently massage the facial muscles with gua sha tools. And we can talk more about that. Um, also, the other thing is Avazia, doing uh, technology that we have available to us today. So many things. We thought that our medicine really came about with the Greeks about 2000 years ago, about 2,500 years ago. But believe it or not, the Chinese way before then, 3,000, 3,500 years, had developed a system of healing, time tested for over 3,500 years. Folks, take advantage of that, please. And give us a call, 772-398-4550. Or again, on the internet at www.traditionalchinesehealing.com. Thank you for being with me uh, today in this uh, show. I hope you gleaned some great knowledge and we will be talking soon on our next show. WPTV's first alert weather on WPSL is brought to you by Seacoast Air Conditioning. Now with a look at our forecast, here's meteorologist Katya Hall. Your WPTV first alert forecast this afternoon, highs in the low 90s, heat index values in the triple digits, scattered showers and storms possible, but mainly inland. Tonight, lows in the mid to upper 70s, with a few coastal showers through the overnight. Tomorrow, Friday, highs in the low 90s. The showers will favor the coast for the morning through the lunch hour, and storms will mainly move west for the afternoon hours. For the weekend, highs reaching the upper 80s to low 90s, a scattered late day showers and storms possible. I'm WPTV First Alert Meteorologist Katya Hall for WPSL 1590, the top of the Treasure Coast. Living in Florida is paradise until your AC breaks down. Seacoast Air Conditioning is family owned and operated for over 40 years. Seacoast Air Conditioning offers service in hours, not days. We answer the phones, show up on time, and fix the problem right the first time. Comfort crisis, don't roast, call Seacoast. You're listening to A Better Way to Help with me, Dr. Stuart Scheib, lead physician at Women's Traditional Chinese Healing. To book your consultation, please call 772-398-4550 or book online at traditionalchinesehealing.com. Ladies, your time has come. No longer will you be a slave to drugs, sleeping pills to put you out, caffeine to wake you up, pills to ease your pain, hormones to regulate your cycle, addictive drugs to calm your anxiety, and antidepressants to lift your mood. Find the root cause of your imbalance and quit treating only the symptoms. You deserve so much more out of life. Women's Traditional Chinese Healing was created for you. Welcome to A Better Way to Help. Our experienced physicians listen to your concerns and formulate an individualized treatment approach to bring you back into balance. We specialize in women's natural health care. When was the last time you really felt amazing? If you don't remember, let us help you refresh your memory. I invite you to contact our office for a consultation with our physicians to determine if you are a good candidate for what we have to offer. Call 772-398-4550 or online at traditionalchinesehealing.com. That's 772-398-4550 or traditionalchinesehealing.com. Hey, I'm back for another episode with you guys. I loved uh, doing the, uh, the episode that we just finished up, the prior episode on, on really the yin and yang of beauty, right? If you didn't hear that show, go back and listen to that. And we will, because um, uh, I like to move on to different topics. And I would love to hear from you guys too. If you ever want to hear something specifically, me discuss something, a topic, it is open game. You can give me a call at 772-398-4550, or you can type me a note at info at traditionalchinesehealing.com. And I'll certainly do that for you guys and, uh, and put that on. I, I wanted this show to be, again, really special. You know, I always try and look at the other side instead of being just 
so uh, focused on acupuncture, right? Because I am an acupuncture physician. I'm board certified in oriental medicine, uh, which includes, or we should say East Asian medicine now, which includes acupuncture, Chinese herbal medicine, something called nutrition, right? Uh, very well versed at that. Um, and also Chinese body work in Chinese exercise therapy. We can't forget about that one, like Tai Chi and Qigong. So you would expect an acupuncturist to talk about acupuncture. When should we have acupuncture? Well, acupuncture is great for so many different things um, to move, if you listen to the last show that I had, to move this energy we call chi and move the energy or the nutrition we call blood. And that nourishes all of our organs and keeps them all healthy and well. But when don't you want to have acupuncture treatment? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever heard of acupuncturists talking about when not to have acupuncture? Every acupuncturist wants to talk, talk, talk about when you should get acupuncture and why you should get acupuncture. But the classics, the Wang Di Nei Jing, which is the Yellow Emperor's classic in traditional Chinese medicine. When I got my doctorate in Chinese medicine and did my residence in Beijing, Shanghai, China, I learned something very, very important. They were called the Chinese classics. And this is in-depth, deep, deep knowledge about Chinese medicine and how to really get the most for a patient without things that they really don't teach you in school. In fact, in the acupuncture school, getting my master's degree, this never came up about when you shouldn't have acupuncture. It was always about when you should have acupuncture. And we have a list that's like a mile long of things that are very, very well treated in a Western medicine diagnosis, like whether it's blood pressure or high blood sugar, or pain syndromes or digestive problems, allergies, stress. I mean, the list goes on and on. And I don't want to go down that list. It's too long. It treats practically everything, right? What, like, think about it. This medicine is 3,500 years old. How old is our current drug medicine therapy, our current biomedicine theory? Well, it started in about 1922 with Best and Banting inventing insulin. Yes, I'm also a registered pharmacist. So that was very important to me to know the history of medicine as a pharmacist. But then we had, during the World War, we had penicillin and sulfur drugs kind of came into the picture. And then we had Bayer creating aspirin, right, in the early 1900s. Well, that was kind of the advent of medication therapy. So it's been maybe about 100 years versus 3,500 years old. So what did we do 3,500 years ago when people had high blood sugar? or they have high blood pressure or cancer, or they had stomach problems and the list goes on and on, right? They had to use natural medicine to deal with that. Chinese herbal medicines, massage type, we call it Chinese body work. They did exercise like, like Tai Chi and Qigong, used Chinese herbal medicine and did acupuncture. Those were amazing therapies that kept people in balance at that time. But there's contraindications in what we call pricking. So pricking was an old term from the Yellow Emperor's classic. I guess I have to go back just a little bit here in telling you what is the yellow, who was the Yellow Emperor. In mythology, and maybe it was true, there was a start of, of emperors and, and the first emperor to rule in China. And his name was called Wang Di. Wang in China, H-U-A-N-G, means yellow. So he was always nicknamed the Yellow Emperor. And yellow is also the, cover, the color of kind of royalty in China. So he was the first emperor and he had a consort. His name was Qi Bo. He was his private physician. Kind of like our president has a private physician to take care of him. Oh, Qi Bo was way more than a physician. He actually educated the emperor on a lot of interesting topics like how to stay healthy, how to preserve your health. Uh, what are things that can impact our health? So the Yellow Emperor wrote an entire book, an entire classic, an ancient classic uh, on the Yellow Emperor's discourse, you know, conversation back and forth, which his prime consort, which was the, the um, Chi Bo, his name was Chi Bo. So going into this text, I'll try and interpret a little bit about what's going on but he wrote a beautiful section about um, what are the reasons that acupuncturists, not specifically acupuncturists, what are the major reasons that, that Chinese medical doctors fail? 
why don't they do a good job? Why doesn't the patient benefit from their treatments? And he wrote a lot of reasons why this occurs. And one of them is that we're gonna discuss now in this show is the contraindications of pricking. When shouldn't you prick? When shouldn't you apply acupuncture to a person? So let's get going if you're ready to rock. The very first reason, which will definitely catch your interest very, very quickly, is do not conduct acupuncture immediately after the patient's had sexual intercourse or prior to receiving sexual intercourse, do not use acupuncture. That was kind of forbidden at that time. And one must not be pricked after being drunk. So, I mean, that kind of makes sense, right? If you come in inebriated to an acupuncturist's office, I'm gonna say, we're gonna sleep it off maybe, or what, you're not gonna get acupuncture at all. Because see, the alcohol is disruptive to the flow of chi and blood in the body. And when you have a disruption in the chi and blood from something coming in, yes, kind of an internal toxin, it disrupts the system, especially the liver, even in Western medicine disrupts the liver, you wouldn't want to have acupuncture before or after drinking fairly heavily or after alcohol in, in general. So I always say, if one comes in for acupuncture to my office, I always warn them, listen, after the treatment, especially in the evening, don't go right out from my office. Oh, I've got a dinner party and I'm gonna go and I'm gonna have alcohol and I'm gonna eat a lot of food. I was like, not a good idea. Is that gonna help you? Definitely not. Is it gonna hurt you? It'll take the treatment off you. Why would you wanna do that when you just balance the body with acupuncture and got things moving, right? So the first one, no acupuncture before after sexual intercourse. The second one, no acupuncture before after drinking for sure. And one must not get angry after the pricking. So not a really good idea that one is pricked right after fatigue or, or uh, heavy labor. But let me get back, I'm sorry, I missed that one, about literally pricking after anger. It's not really good to have a lot of emotion, uh, emotional distraught coming in and just jumping on the table and getting acupuncture. I even will say to a patient, we're just gonna calm you down for a minute is there anything that we can do? Maybe a little bit of green tea, relaxing and kind of thinking about positive thoughts, getting rid of a lot of that internal hostility because acupuncture, albeit that it does treat anxiety, it just, it does treat anger that comes from the liver, the anxiety coming from an unbalanced kidney system. Although we can treat the emotions very, very effectively, it's not a really good idea to treat the individual when they're very, very angry. That's the key. And you're not to use acupuncture when someone's really, really fatigued or really, really tired. I see that, I had seen that when ladies come in, they may be hard livers, maybe they're working outside, maybe they're gardening, maybe they've just exercised, they just came from their Zumba class, or maybe they just came from a very uh, stair stepping or something like that from the gym. And they come in in their gym clothes and they're like, yeah, I'm ready for acupuncture. I'm like, I'm not ready to give it to you <laughs> because this fatigue or this heavy labor is actually disruptive to the acupuncturist treatment. So you must not do hard labor after acupuncture as well. So don't receive an acupuncture treatment and then go right to the gym right after acupuncture because again, it disrupts that flow chi. Think about time for your body, right? That's what acupuncture is about too. I really think the underlying healing is because the stillness and the calmness of the body Listen, we are a civilization, we are a culture in America of run and gun, of go, go, go all the time. And what happens is you deplete something called yang. Remember yin and yang that I talked about in the prior show on, on the yin and yang of beauty? We literally deplete yang, which makes us more yin. What does that mean? More quiet, more tired, more sullen, more sedentary. That's all yin. Yang is energy and vitality, but you can burn that out by being too aggressive and never relaxing or never calming the body down. So you want to make sure that you're not really fatigued or doing hard labor afterward. And oh, pricking or doing acupuncture after you just come from the buffet, you know, the buffet line, or you just had a huge lunch, not a good idea either at that point, or leaving an acupuncture treatment and literally eating your, they call it in the ancient classics, do not prick after eating your fill, 
which means that's never a Chinese philosophy to eat your fill. When I'm in China and I'm eating, oh my gosh, it's wonderful. You spend enough time, hour, hour and a half at a meal, usually at a round table. You got a lazy Susan that spins around. They're bringing out hot, piping hot food, dish by dish. And as you're eating, you're enjoying, you're talking, you're laughing, you're conversing, and you're enjoying the taste and savoring your food. You're not eating it as you're rolling down the road, throwing wrappers out the window or whatever. You know, It's not designed, our, our digestive system is designed to only eat to about 80% capacity. So when we're eating and we felt, oh, I'm good. I don't really need to eat anymore. I'm not loading a plate. You get this little plate in, in China in a little dish and you might load it up with a little bit of rice or you might load it up with vegetables. And then you're constantly picking from the, from the Lazy Susan, these hot dishes. So you'll feel like you're about 80% filled and that's time to stop and then just use green tea or use a beverage. My favorite dessert in China was always watermelon because sweet always cuts off the appetite. And sweet, especially in the summer, watermelon is a great herb to nourish the yin, to nourish the dryness, the flushing, the heat from the summer heat. Amazing Chinese herb. One must not prick being hungry. So opposite, if you come into my practice and you're really, really hungry, and you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't have my stomachs growling and I didn't have lunch. Not a good time to be doing acupuncture, right? And one must not be hungry after the pricking. So that means that you have, a, I tell my patients before you come in for an acupuncture treatment, have a little snack, have something in your stomach so that you're content, that your digestive system is happy and not growling, roaring back at me when I'm trying to do acupuncture at that point. And the same thing goes with thirst. Don't come in for an acupuncture treatment, really, really thirsty. That would be like the person that just worked out at the gym and they rave, maybe were drinking, drinking, drinking. I even see patients sometimes coming into my practice that they like live with a water bottle hanging to the side, like they don't go anywhere without water, right? So you don't need to really do that. The body is quite capable of holding on to fluids. It's just like, what is the right fluid? The right fluid initially, I'll, I'll tell you, is not in a plastic bottle. You don't want those plasticizers leaching anyway, but that is another show that we'll have to have just on toxins alone that besiege us that we don't know where they're coming from. So don't be thirsty. And one not, must not be thirsty after the pricking. So it goes before and after for most of these, right? And one must not be pricked when one is terrified greatly or flying into a fury. Now that's interesting, right? That's not even just anger, but that's when we're really frightful or fearful. Not a good time to do acupuncture. You can kind of think of that. The energy of that is like unwealth. I mean, un. Uh, stabilized, you know, everybody is terrified or grieving or crying and then say, oh, I, I need acupuncture to calm me down. Not right now, not a good therapy for you. Isn't that interesting how the classics have actually told us when not to have acupuncture. So the next time you go into your acupuncturist and say, when shouldn't I have acupuncture? And if they say, well, no, you can have pretty much acupuncture anytime you want, you know, night or day on a cruise ship at 11 o'clock at night or 12 o'clock or right after the midnight buffet, folks, on a cruise, great time to have an acupuncture treatment, right? Wrong. Maybe you've seen the Pepto-Bismol commercials or something. I didn't mean to state a name, but I mean, isn't that craziness when you see stuff on television? It's like the people are at like this midnight buffet and they're eating tacos and they're eating all this rich foods or dessert. And then you see the person's stomach going, whoa. Oh. And then what they go to the room or whatever, and they take a bad, a drug that's just going to treat the symptom, right? And they come back out and you think, oh yeah, these people are really smart. They really know how to prevent disease. And you realize that they're right back at the buffet table again, doing what caused the initial problem in the first place. That really didn't make a lot of sense to me, right? Got to be just a little bit brighter than that. So when you're terrified or flying into a fury, not a good time, and you want to wait until that energy has become calm and has become relaxed. And sometimes if I have patients, they're all worked up and they really have a lot going on mentally, I'll just put them on a biomat, which is our, one of our therapies that is amazing, producing far infrared and great circulation for all the internal systems. 
and just let them relax for a little while. Oh, it's nice and warm, it's cozy, and they're getting good energy flowing through their body. And it's amazing how fast that calms the body systems because it works on enzyme systems, it works on hormonal systems, works on detox systems, it works on generalized circulation system. So many benefits to that therapy. And we have a lot of patients come in that will receive acupuncture while they're on the biomat, which is a great one-two combination for healing and for circulation as well. So remain calm. The patient, this is interesting, the patients who come by car and you're like, cars, you're talking the Yellow Emperor's Classic. This was written 2,500 years ago. What are you talking about cars? Cars translated was cart. If they came by a cart, you know, someone pulling them, right? To get to your acupuncture appointment. You would imagine that most people back in that day that would have acupuncture would be, um, of upper stature maybe, right? If they could afford the acupuncturist at that time to perform the therapy. So you can see them coming by car, by cart to the acupuncturist treatment. But they said to the patient who comes by car, he should or she should lie on the bed for the period of taking a meal before pricking, which means you have to lie on the bed for the length of time that it usually would take to complete a meal. Sometimes it's like a 45 minutes hour, maybe, or whatever your, your eating preferences are. Why is that? It's because the chi has been stagnant. You haven't really moved anything. You came sometimes long. Now in China, it wasn't like right next door, right? Sometimes these people were coming from long distances. This was kind of similar to what I read in a, it was a really cool, cool study that I read one time about people that originally started flying transcontinental. They were going from New York to London, right? There was something called, um, and forgive me if I can't remember because it just came to the top of my brain. Um, it was called uh, the Heathrow, I think it was Heathrow Hospital or something. But what was happening is people were having strokes and blood clots and it was called like Heathrow stroke or something. What was happening is that was such a long flight initially on some of these, oh my gosh, I think they were like DC 10s or something like that, that used to cross the Atlantic, that by the time the people got down in England, they had been sitting for so long that they started having circulation issues. And that's true even today. If you're taking a long plane flight, every once in a while, when I fly to China, oh my gosh, going like over the North Pole, it's a 20 hour flight, 19, 20 hours flight. You have to get up stretch, do some qigong, move the body, because if it becomes stagnant, blood becomes stagnant, if qi becomes stagnant, the energy, and you end up with blood not moving. In Western medicine, that's called problems. It's called either a thrombus, a blood clot, a heart attack, a stroke. And they found out that that was the reason that, that they were receiving so many strokes when these patients were landing and it was kind of this syndrome they nicknamed. I'm sorry, I don't have all the information. You guys can Google it and fact check me on that. But it was really an actual syndrome. They found that actually taking a, a glass of water and a whole lemon squeezed into the glass of water, apparently the citrus, maybe the limoline, I'm not sure exactly what the chemical constituent within the citrus was, that actually helps the circulation. So kind of consider that next, next time on a flight, instead of grabbing the beer or grabbing the wine, which are actually natural diuretics and are gonna dehydrate you more and make you more predisposed to developing blood problems, blood circulation problems, reach for the water with a squeeze of lemon into it and prevent maybe a stroke from sitting really, really, really long if you have that predisposition. If you're walking to the acupuncturist's office, you may have walked a long distance. You should sit down and rest for a period of 10 li walk. What does that mean? About an hour. 10 li is about an hour in Chinese medicine before pricking, before acupuncture. So when you walk, then relax. When you get to the acupuncturist's office, your body has been over kind of stimulated and you want it to kind of quiet down in preparation for the treatment. So that's a really good thing. Now, remember all of these items that I'm telling you about on today's show are based on an acupuncturist's knowledge of when not to use acupuncture and not when to use it, but when not to use it. And good physicians going back in the classics, that's differentiated in Chinese medicine in the book of the Wang Di Nei Jing. What are the failings of physicians when they can't help someone? And this, I focus on this because folks, my intent is I work for you. 
You know, when a patient calls me, and by the way, 772-398-4550 or traditionalchinesehealing.com. When you call me, I'm already thinking about these things. And the worst thing that could happen is if I'm not doing something that I'm supposed to be doing as a well-educated Chinese acupuncturist, Chinese herbalist, and all of my skills in biomedicine, I don't want to make your problem worse. And that's why the Chinese have actually laid down strict rules, not for you, but for me to tell me how to treat you and how I should address this type of care. And I pay a lot of attention to the reasons for failings from Chinese doctors. So it says here, a physician of lower level, which means there's many levels of physicians. Some physicians, the sages, just looked at an individual and could tell what was going on. Other physicians had to look and palpate, touch the individual, and then tell you what's going on. Other physicians had to look, touch, and then look at the tongue, take the pulse, and then they could tell what's going on with the individual. But it says here a physician of lower level pays no attention to these contraindications. And actually, she or he is injuring the body of the patient. It causes the patient to become aching and painful of the physique. It consumes the marrow, which is the life force of the bones and fails to spread body fluids and the patient will not be able to obtain the refined substances from the nutrition. Isn't that crazy, crazy straightforward? It says, doc, if you don't wanna hurt the patient, you better let them know about these general rules about acupuncture so that they can really heal like they're supposed to be healing. I hope you enjoyed the show uh, today. I uh, hope it was a little bit different for you, a little bit of a mix up. And you have these discussions with your acupuncture physician when you go and receive acupuncture. If you're coming into my office and you have other questions, or if you're not coming into my office, maybe you're listening to me from far away, then give me a call at 772-398-4550. And, uh, or you can get online. Our website is www.traditionalchinesehealing.com. And it, we have an amazing website. You can get a lot of information about what I generally talk about. You can listen to me lecture a little bit on Chinese medicine on the website. And I'd love to hear your comments. So give me some great feedback too. I'd love to have a show specifically designed for you. And you can email me at info at traditionalchinesehealing.com. So the next show, we're gonna get into some more great stuff about Chinese medicine. Maybe we'll talk about acupuncture. Maybe we'll talk about herbs. Maybe we'll talk about some really weird stuff that goes on in our community, like autoimmune disease. I have got so much show planned for you. So many shows planned for you, folks. It just, it's overwhelming. We're just going to have such a great time week by week. So tune in for me again on the next show, and we will get to more traditional Chinese healing, natural healing for your body. I'm Dr. Stuart Scheip. I've loved being with you today. Dr. Stuart Scheib's Holistic Health House on WPSL.